So today I have three products in front of me which are always in my backpack, which is the FR Sky X9 Lite. Also the Skyzone Sky O3 OLEDs and also the HDOs with the Rapid Fire. Now those three are always in my backpack because those are the things I always reach out and grab. First, let's start off with the transmitter right here, which as we can tell, this is a whole new setup also that I'm recording in. Let me know if you guys like it or I should just switch back to something else. So right now, this is the FR Sky X9 Lite. Now it had a bunch of controversy due to the protocol the FR Sky was releasing, which was the access protocol, which basically was not backward compatible with stuff like the D8, even though we're having a bunch of new releases with these crazy B boards that are running D8. However, some people say that Betaflight has released an update which will allow it, the, the crazy B boards basically to work on D16. However, I have not verified that and I have not tested that, so I can't speak much about that. But what I can speak much about of is the FR Sky X9 Lite. I used to run nightly builds in order to run Crossfire and also the multi protocol module in, in order to run D8 protocol. However, recently, well, not recently, maybe about three weeks ago, I think now, FR Sky or OpenTX have released the official firmware that is compatible with the Crossfire. So you're not going to have to jump through hoops and, and do all kinds of crazy things. You're going to have an official stable release that has everything you want functioning from the multi protocol module to the TBS Crossfire to the R9s. I don't know which R9s to be exact. I didn't test all of them, but I can tell you Crossfire and the multi protocol modules are working. Now, some of you might be like, well, what is the multi protocol module? Well, a multi protocol module will allow you to run a bunch of things. You'll be able to fly toys. Uh, you'll be able to fly Flysky, Spectrum. You can fly almost anything with these multi protocol modules, which I'll have linked down below. Now, Back to the FR Sky X9 Lite. Now, once you get the software off to the side and you have a bunch of D16, let's just say you have a bunch of XM pluses, the FR Sky X9 Lite is a beast and it's a it's just absolutely phenomenal. This is my main driver and this is the thing that I've been using constantly. I mean, constantly, constantly. Um, I don't bring anything else with me. It's it, The form factor is great. It doesn't take much space. The battery life is pretty good. It depends on, you know, also something that's really nice, it's pretty flexible. So it fits standard 18650s. So depending on what you buy, it depends on how long it lasts. So you can buy 3,500 milliamp expensive 18650s and you could expect pretty good lifetime out of it. So that's something really nice out of the box that gets overlooked because of the shitty firmware issue. However, the firmware doesn't make it unstable. It actually works just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. All of the all of the functions work and they've even added more features. However, I personally don't use and I think many, um, not all, but many FPV pilots are really not going to use. Now, if you are an FPV pilot, uh, there's really nothing else you might need other than this i mean if you already have a transmitter you don't need you don't need another one but if you're looking to upgrade from a fly sky i'd highly recommend you get the x9 light now i do have the horus i have the more expensive ones i have the x light but nothing feels as good as the fr sky x9 light to me and it's been lasting and it's been reliable and i've had zero zero issues with it which is something also really great and this is the reason why i'm making this video however if you take a closer look down here what you see is that it's rebranded as URUAV. Now this is the exact same one as any other X9 Lite, but the only difference is the sticker here. That's it, there's nothing else. Everything is exactly identical from the software to the hardware to everything, except also the packaging has URUAV, but it's all manufactured inside FR Sky. So yeah, you're getting exactly the same thing. Now the overall lifespan, I mean, as you can tell, it still looks brand new. I've been using it constantly. It's holding up very well. The plastic is doing good. The stickers are actually still on there, which is also something really nice. And also the gimbals are still pretty good, as you can tell right here. Well, you can't really tell, but the gimbals are still really great, which is something you look for. Switches have not come loose. I've had that happen on a Horus X10. So overall, it's a good radio. This is by far the best budget radio, premium radio. You can purchase budget as in the price. This is the best price to performance radio you can purchase that I'm, I'm using every day. Uh, well, every time I fly, this is the only thing I am using, even though I've tested everything else. But just everything about it is right. It has enough switches. It has uh, the right feel for it. It has proper full-fledged gimbals with nice throw in them. And the form factor, and it fits in the backpacks, and it doesn't take much space. And the battery flexibility, and it also has some mods, which like I've done before, which is the battery mod, and it's still working flawlessly. So overall, it's a great radio, no matter what anybody says. Uh, you know, and, and what proves it is I'm just constantly using it. And 
Anyone who has an X9 Lite, please let us know down in the comment section so people can know also. So this is a really, really great radio that I'd highly recommend for anyone getting started or wanting to upgrade from a different protocol like or a different company like Spectrum or something. Now, let's jump down to the goggles. So the goggles, what we have here, the HDO, these are the HDOs, not the HDO2s, with the rapid fire versus the Sky Zone OLEDs. Now, these two are constantly in my backpack. However, I rarely, actually, I've never touched the HDOs ever since I've gotten the OLEDs. So the Sky Zone has been my main primary driver for the longest time, and I haven't had to hit any situations where I needed the rapid fire because the inbuilt sky zone um receivers for me personally at least uh in the band that i'm flying in the sky zone's been doing a really great job even on shitty toothpicks with really crappy uh, video transmitters or stuff with really bad transmitters it's holding up very well but you can see some multi-pathing lines into it but it's nothing that's going to hinder your performance whatsoever so the overall clarity in the image is noticeably better than the hdo uh than the fat shark sorry which is the HDO. So the overall image clarity just lets me not give a crap. The SD card or the DVR recording on the Sky Zone is on par with Fast Shark in my opinion. I'm using it on my channel. That every single DVR you've seen ever since this past uh, this came out, it is from the Sky Zone. So um, there's nothing else. It just has many, many features. You know, the on and off button is the biggest thing. Also, the battery flexibility. You have no idea how convenient that is. Yes, the HDO2 has those. However, for me personally, it's, you know, I don't see Fat Shack as a contender anymore. I know this is really weird to, to say, but it's for me, like if, I, if I'm going to dish out another $500, $600, $700, I would either go with the DJI or Orca. And then if not those two, then go to a Sky Zone. And then now Fat Shack fits somewhere in the middle. It's just, it's not even on the leaderboard anymore. It's just like, yeah, it's one of those products that's good but there's also better that's cheaper you know I, better is very that's a harsh word but you know everybody has their own use case but for my current use cases and the image quality and everything the sky zone is totally be is just absolutely phenomenal um you know if you know this is all together here is what like 600 dollars, 700 with the with the with the uh, rapid fire and um the batteries you know you just could run only a 2s but this one is just ready to go for 400 something dollars so you know it's it's uh it depends on your budget depends on what you want but you're gonna see more and more people use sky zones if anyone's gotten to try a sky zone and if you do have a sky zone do one thing increase the brightness on your oleds uh you can increase the brightness inside and it actually increases the brightness like it does on your phone and you know when i paired it with a run cam split three I swear I felt like I was flying HD footage. That's how clear it was. It's it's really nice. I mean, you have to try it to test it, but it's noticeably nice. Like I, I don't doubt myself into saying that, that when anyone puts these two back to back, they'll actually, with a good camera, they'll actually see the difference and it's, it's, uh, it's noticeable. This is my own opinion. Now you could take this as you please, but for me personally, I do prefer the Sky Zones over the HDOs in terms of image quality just you know drop that image quality now if you remove the rapid fire <clears throat> from the fat shark and you compare these two the, the sky zone is it will beat it in every single category uh everything from the everything feature set compatibility convenience uh, for example the power button just everything sky zone actually wins the only thing that allows the fat shark to compete with sky zone is just the rapid fire even even the sky zone is cheaper you see what i mean but then again now the hdo2 is out so it's a whole new ball game but from seeing people's reactions it doesn't seem like it's that big of an increase i mean i saw the difference between an hdo and the sky zone but i didn't see that much of a difference between the hd3 and an hdo and th there is somewhat of a difference but the difference between the sky zone and the hdo is really noticeable and again this is my opinion but i'm yeah, i'm fairly confident when i say that and uh, I'd really like to know other people's thoughts and theories and, you know, your experience down below. And I uh, hope this video helped someone out there. So if it really did, please leave a like. Also subscribe and check the links down below. There's a great support channel. And come pick up some FPV t-shirts at my shop. I have really, really awesome shirts and a bunch of giveaways on my Patreon. So that's going to include it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully it was useful to at least someone out there. 
And let me know your thoughts on everything that's coming out new, the HDO2s and everything. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.